infinitely dividable in that it must it must approach infinite density as size decreases toward zero dimensions. This conclusion is reached by reasoning alone. It is reinforced by the observation that matter does in fact increase rapidly in density as scales as scale becomes smaller over a range of four the orders of magnitude in the observable in the observable universe. From the preceding considerations, it seems altogether reasonable reasonable and, and in a way compelling to deduce that space time and substance are all infinitely dividable because the consequences of the alternative are logically absurd. But if they are infinitely dividable on the smaller scale, on the smaller scale, what about the larger scale? Recall our earlier argument that the entire visible universe would have undefined scale in space, time and mass unless such scale is provided by the presence of other substance in the greater universe beyond. Their argument must remain true without limits. The upper limits to the structure of substance, dimensions of the universe and the extent of time must all be as an unbounded on the high side as they need to be on the small side. This will become even clearer as we further examine the nature of substances. As we marked earlier, motion and orientation have no meaning for a single particle in an empty universe. Now introduce a second infinitesimal particle. This gives meaning to orientation, since angles can be measured from the line joining the two particles. It also provides a single measurement of length, the distance uh, between the particles. It does not, as before, provide a scale for the empty universe, since the distance cannot be measured in units uh, of particle diameters, which are still being assumed to have no dimensions. Therefore, there is no way yet to determine whether uh, our particles are separated by a microscopic or a macroscopic distance. There is as yet still no meaning to motion in this two-particle universe. The two particles cannot change direction, since all directions have meaning only relative to the particle to particle direction and the two particles cannot change distance since all distance have meaning only relative to the particle to particle distance and in a very real sense this universe without the possibility of motion or change has no time time can have no meaning if there cannot be events or change to mark its progress put differently if there were such a thing as an absolute time which existed somehow in addition to our two particles, the lapse of a microsecond or a million years would be just the same and utterly undistinguishable. But the existence of something with substance, such as uh, an absolute time scale, violates the assumptions of our construction that nothing exists except our two infinitesimal particles in an empty universe. Remember, we refer to substance rather than matter to cover anything which exists. An absolute scale of time, just as for a structure or framework in space, would have substance in this broad definition. Perhaps you have thought about one possible event or change which might occur in our two-particle universe up to this point. We might imagine that the two particles coincide which is distinguishable condition from non-coincidence. It might be fair to say that the first coincidence of the two particles marks the beginning of time, and that the interval, the interval between any two coincidences marks an interval of time. This interval still has arbitrary and indeterminate length. We cannot tell if the interval to the next coincidence is longer or shorter than the last. That implies, that implies an absolute scale though, of time to measure against. We can merely mark the progression of time by counting coincidences. This brings us to an important point. 
in an in a, an empty universe consisting of two elementary units of substance the ordinary properties of the universe time space matter do not exist outside of the particles and between events of coincidence it can therefore be said in a logically meaning, meaningful way that space and time which are empty of particles and events do not exist this eliminates a logical fallacy we have been skirting up around up to now about whether the empty the empty space and time surrounding our particles exist our use of substance of substance to mean anything which exists is logically correct since a true void would not exist in either space or time in the operationally defined meaning of the word exist as used here of course for actual particles with finite dimensions events of coincidence do not occur instead Instead, we have what may be operationally described as collisions, in the sense already discussed. Two particles interact collisionally when their subparticles at all levels approach the infinite, the infinite density limitation and are forced to retreat. Notice, however, that if you were to imagine an infinitesimal volume of space in our real universe, within which there were only two uncomposed infinitesimal particles and nothing else including forces then all that we have concluded about distance and time not having between events of coincidence would still be true no time or time interval would exist until an event occurred with the only possible events being collisions with other elementary particles of substance on the most microscopic levels time must proceed instantly from one collision event to the next. Reflection on this, which implies the non-existence of space time between events in the region, begins to provide some insight into why the universe seems to behave as if space and time were relative, not absolute. We have reason to the very concept that Einstein theory shows, you know, that they are relative. And we are clearly highlighting the point you know, the point that true void or vacuum implies non-existence. We are asserting that every point in the perceptible universe is at every moment of time filled with contiguous substance at some infinitesimal level. If substance could be imagined to become absent anywhere at any time, time there would cease and the perceptible universe would collapse until the vacuum was filled. Put in another way, a particle reaching one edge of a vacuum could would skip instantaneously to the opposite edge, just if the vacuum had zero dimensions. Because there is no substance to mark the passage of time inside of the vacuum, and no absolute time without substance. For example, if there were such regions where matter density is so low that no collisional interaction between units of substance occurred, then all substance on the edge of such regions would instantly dissipate in it itself into non-interacting regions, followed by substance slightly further in, and so on. All substance in this universe would dissipate instantly into the void. We suppose that even solid bodies are held together by the action of agents which would disperse if not continually held, held together by the presence of, of other substances. So that even solids would dissolve. Since this does not happen, we conclude that this universe has no such regions where collisional interactions between units of substance do not occur. <laughs>
and relativity. As we can realize, the point becomes crystal clear. Not only the Big Bang has a lot of patched up inconsistencies, but actually it is nonsense to begin with. The universe is very much a pressure system. Gravitation, for example, this is a, you know, a great uh, example of the difference of potential and density in our universe. So to make up like a finite universe in the middle of nothing is plain wrong, as anyone could naturally suspect.